preparing our hearts in prayer for worship. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Our hymn of praise today is number 605, What Does the Lord Require? We will sing all four verses. to hear the Ten Commandments from the Catechism, everything that's in bold, that is your response in this worship. Our deacons will lead us. What are the Ten Commandments? The, the Ten, Ten Commandments, Commandments are the laws, laws given, given to, to Moses and to the people of Israel. What, would you, what do we learn from these commandments? We, we learn, learn two things. things. Our, Our duty, duty to God and our, our duty, duty to, to our, our neighbors. neighbors. What is our duty to God? Our duty, our duty to is, God to is to believe and trust in God, in God to, to love and obey God, and to bring, bring others, others to know Him, him. To, put to put nothing, nothing in the place of God, to, to show, show God respect in thought, word, and deed, and, and to set aside regular times for worship, prayer, and the study of God's ways. What is our duty to our neighbors? Our, our duty, duty to our neighbors is to love, love them, them as, as ourselves, ourselves and, and to do to, to other peoples as we wish, wish them to do to us. To, to love, honor, and help, and help our parents and family, to honor those in authority, and to, and to meet, meet their, their just demands, 
to show, to show respect, respect for, the for the life God has given us, to work and pray for peace, to bear no malice, prejudice, or hatred in our hearts, and to be kind to all the creatures of God, to be honest and fair in our dealings, to seek justice, freedom, and the necessities of life for all people, and to use our talents and possessions as ones who must answer for them to God, to speak the truth and not to mislead others by our silence, to resist temptations to envy, greed, and jealousy, to rejoice in other people's gifts and graces, and to do our duty for the love of God who has called us into fellowship with Him. What is the purpose of the Ten Commandments? The Ten Commandments were given to define our relationship with God and our neighbors. Since we do not fully obey them, are they useful at all? Since we do not fully obey them, we see more clearly our sin and our need for redemption. This is the summary of the law. Jesus said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. with you and also with you let us pray almighty god you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now we will hear the lessons. Third Sunday in Lent, from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, 1, 18 through 25. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We will all read the psalm together, Psalm 19. The heavens, heavens declare, declare the, the glory, glory of God, 
and the, and the firmament, firmament shows, shows his handiwork. handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It, it rejoices, rejoices like, like a champion, champion to run, run its course. It, it goes forth from, from the uttermost edge of the heavens and, and runs about it to the end of it again. again. Nothing, Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The, the law of the Lord is perfect and, and revives the soul. And testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them, there is a great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. The gospel hymn is There is a Balm in Gilead. We're going to sing two verses before the gospel and one verse following. gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Christ. <coughs> the Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. 
In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. We're familiar with the story of Jesus in the temple. There's a number of temple stories, but this one was pretty remarkable because we don't see Jesus getting physical ever. This is an amazing moment. Now John puts it at the beginning of the gospel. And the other gospel writers all put this particular occasion at the very end of his ministry. The synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, probably got it right. And John just pushed it there for effect. He wanted to have that demonstrating the authority of Jesus from the very first. On the other hand, there's a great a scholar named Dr. Alfred Edersheim, who wrote The Life and Times of Jesus the Messiah, and he believed that it happened twice because the words aren't exactly the same, and he thought Jesus started his ministry driving those lambs and goats and doves, that he ran those out at the very beginning of his ministry to demonstrate that God was doing something new. And then again at the end, to bring the point home. As many as 100,000 people might make the pilgrimage for Passover. It, the people traveled long distances and it was impossible for them to bring livestock with them because they couldn't be guaranteed that there would be places to graze along the way and they certainly couldn't carry enough grain to keep their livestock going or water. Everyone came by foot or camel or donkey so they had to buy their sacrifice. And they knew what quality their lambs were at home. And they felt that they had to give God 
the best of what they had. That was what was required. Give the Lord the best of your flock, the firstborn and the best. So when they got to the temple, they had to buy something equivalent to what they would have if they had made sacrifice at home. The only problem was the temple priest could not take their money because their money was all Roman coins or maybe from other countries, but they all had images on them. And we just heard in the Ten Commandments that you're not to have any graven images. Actually, it doesn't say you're not to have any. It just says you're not to create any graven image to bow down and worship them. <clears throat> when they got to the temple, they had to exchange their money. The money couldn't have the picture of Caesar on it. Their money had to be temple coins, which had no image at all. And the problem with having money changers is there's always an opportunity for corruption. The value of their money from wherever they came was not the value that they got when they exchanged their money. And so the lamb that they needed to buy that was equivalent to the one they had at home, now they were either going to have to pay more for it in order to have the, the best sacrifice or they were going to feel badly because what they were offering God, to God was less than they would have, but they have to have the money to get home again. And this feast, Passover, was as significant to the people as our Holy Communion is to us. And not just our Holy Communion, but communion we take at Christmas and Easter, the high holy days. That was how significant it was. And Jesus could understand the remorse of the pilgrims who wanted to offer God their best. Jesus defended the poor in this respect. He took, the, took up their cause, which tells us that Jesus was not a pacifist, was he? Jesus was an activist when it was someone else who was being offended. He didn't defend himself physically. Even in the garden when they arrested him, and Jesus rebuked Peter for de defending him. But according to this gospel, he made a whip of cords and drove the animals out of there. Well, now, how are the pilgrims going to feel now? They don't have the right coinage, so they're going to have to deal with the money changes, but they also can't buy anything. So how did that help? Running all the livestock off, dumping out the money, how did that help? It appears Jesus wasn't just taking their cause. And this is the thing that got him into real trouble. Jesus was making a statement against the entire institutional practice of religion that tended to cut people off from God rather than bring them in. Jesus was making a statement about the way the temple religion, the worship, was practiced. We see over in two chapters later in John, when Jesus is talking to the Samaritan woman, he said to her, God is spirit. And those who worship God must worship in spirit and truth. So she had asked, which is the right place to worship God? Which is the right place for a temple? Over in Jerusalem or in Samaria? Some say Samaria, some say Jerusalem. What do you say? And he says, those who worship God will worship in spirit and truth. This statement that he made at the temple was both championing those pilgrims who came with their hearts set on worship of God and being robbed in the process. But he was also establishing a new understanding of what it was to worship God. So today we have to ask ourselves, do our traditions, do our practices actually bring people to worship God in spirit and truth? Or are we simply piling on rituals and commandments that we feel like people ought to do? We worship God in spirit and truth. And God then speaks God's word to our heart. It says in the scripture that there will come a day when I will write 
my laws. I will write what I want from you in your hearts. And that day has come. Jesus ushered in that new day, which this event foreshadowed. For God is not necessarily worshipped in temples made of brick and stone. God is worshipped in the hearts of the people who gather here. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now if you will say with me the words of this historic creed, the Nicene Creed. We trust in one God, the creator, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We trust in Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, begotten eternally of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We trust in the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, and is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, universal, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With all our hearts, with all our minds, and with all our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Almighty God, grant that those who guide us may be faithful in their leadership of the Church of God. Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Scott, our bishop, Elizabeth, our canon. We pray for Dean Katie and Mother Stephanie, our priests, Greg and Colleen, our deacons. That, that all who confess, confess your, your name may be, may be united, united in your truth, truth live together in your love, and reveal your glory in, in the world. Guide all people and all the nations in the ways of mercy, justice, and peace through the leadership, especially of Antonio, Secretary General of the United Nations, Joe, our President, and his Cabinet Secretaries, for members of the U.S. Congress and those in transition, for Pete, our Governor, and for members of our State Legislature, for Stan and Corey, our Mayors, and the members of our City Councils. That we may honor one another and, another and serve the common good. good. Give us all a reverence for the Earth as your own creation that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We command to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled and, and that, that we, we may share with all your saints in your eternal, eternal kingdom. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. 
that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit and keep you in eternal life. Amen. 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 Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And may we not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the full life of our Lord Jesus Christ within us preserve our bodies and souls to your purpose and your glory. And may the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and in you and among you, now and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks. 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 Thanks.